Sorry, I don't love you. A friend you've grown accustomed to. Cause with you, if something isn't wrong, something isn't wrong, something isn't right. I wish you could be happy. Hey everyone, welcome to Geekdom is back, and this week we finally have hit sports as a topic. I brought on Joe Urban of Take This to Heart Records, and we are going to talk all about his favorite NBA team, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Joe, how are you doing today? I am well. How about yourself? Pretty good. Are you excited to talk about this nice young team you have going on? Yes. I Very young team, very ex- exciting to watch. They're definitely one of those league pass teams that Every game, you're going to get something different out of them. Yeah, definitely. And I think what's cool about some of these teams we're seeing now is that we get all of these younger guys who have a ton of potential, and some of them, it kind of pays off right away. You know, last year, Carl Anthony Towns was Rookie of the Year, and it was definitely well-deserved. And now, you know, it's him, Andrew Wiggins, Zach Levine, and you even have some newer young guys like Tyus Jones and I believe Chris Dunn on the team. So it's like you kind of have this core group already. And even though I believe the Timberwolves are four and nine right now, which obviously isn't the preferred record they would like to have, if you flip that, maybe a little better, you know. But with these young teams, obviously you're going to have these learning curves and, you know, you have Ricky Rubio on the team as a veteran. So even though he's not the player a lot of people thought he would be, he's still a very good point guard. And, you know, he's pretty frequently leading the team in assists, especially, you know, when he gets more of those minutes. And I know recently they played the Lakers and, That's my team for anyone who is unaware of that. And they pretty much destroyed the Lakers, which, you know, obviously bummer for me, but great for you. And in that game, Andrew Wiggins scored 47 points. So did you get to watch that game? Um, I did not. I got to see the highlights from it. And I looked at this. I kind of looked at the uh, the stat sheet in the morning and go, he just had a 47 point game. And I just said, damn it. He's a... You know, what's surprising is he's shooting 44% from three, and I never – I thought it would take another two, three years before he got a respectable uh, three-point shot. And now that he's hitting them, it gives him that extra – you know, he's got great first step. It gives him – defenders have to close out on him. So he can get to the basket. He can – he gets the line really well. He kind of reminds me of like DeM- like a young DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, and what's interesting, you know, I mentioned Wiggins, Levine, and Towns being kind of your – big three going forward and every game that the team has played so far this season one of the three of them have been the leader in points for the games and you know more often than not they're in the high 20s low 30s range for those games and then obviously Wiggins having the 47 point game is not the regular thing but you know with these three guys scoring as many points as they do on any given night I think it's safe to expect the three of them to exchange having these huge nights like Wiggins did against the Lakers. And you even have, you know, Zach Levine has put up 37 points in a game, which obviously it's not a huge, huge number, but still 37 points is nothing to scoff at. And I think while I haven't watched any of their games in full or anything, and with them being so young, I think what's impressive is just how consistent they have been so far, even though, you know, their win loss total doesn't really reflect that. Obviously they've lost some close games and others haven't been as close, but you know, they have quite a few games coming up here over like this holiday break tomorrow or tonight. Actually, we are recording this on November 23rd, the day before Thanksgiving. Tonight they play the Pelicans, and the Pelicans are not a great team. 
you know. So they could get a win tonight, and the only downside is their next three games are away games. So they are on the road in New Orleans, then they head to Phoenix, and then they head to Golden State. And as you know, gold, playing Golden State at home is never a benefit for anyone other than Golden State. Yeah, that Golden State's like a, a cheat code video game team. Uh, <laughs> you want to talk about guys that can get hot, everyone on that team, anyone that's yeah. starting. I mean, other than Zaza Pachulia, which I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to be traded in the next month. <laughs> they need – the reason they're not doing well on defense is because uh, Bo gets gone, and that allows right. – everyone else to rotate everyone else to switch and you got Boga, who's you know probably a top five uh defender of the, of the rim he's gonna at least be in, in, in anyways he's gonna be intimidating i'm no one's intimidated go driving in zaza Pachulia. yeah and that kind of leads me into something i wanted to talk to you about with carl anthony towns you know obviously he he's this huge guy and he can score points, he can, you know, get assists to people, and he can defend. And, you know, he had a game where he was the point scorer and rebound leader. Sorry, points leader and rebound leader. And, you know, that was a game against the Clippers on November 12th, and they lost that game. But do you think these well-rounded performances from him are going to be a huge positive going forward with as well as he can rebound on the defensive end, how well he can, you know, just alter shots so that he can get those high number of rebounds and the way he can score in the paint. I think that what separates his game is his efficiency. You know, right. he's, and he's, he's shooting 43% from three. The, the best thing about the, the best thing I've seen from, uh, the big three of the Wolves, is that they're all over 40%. They're all taking about over four threes a game between Wiggins, Towns, and Levine. They're they're efficient from there. It opens up what they're really good at doing. Like Carl Anthony Towns is a great post. I mean, he's a, like on the block. He can face up. He can he can back you down. Wiggins has that first step, and, and Levine has – and he's ex, you know probably one of the best jumpers in the game. When he gets to the rim, he can finish. He's going to be efficient. He's going to lead the team. I mean – it doesn't look like he's gonna lead the team in scoring this year because Wiggins took a huge step. Right. He's gonna lead the team in rebounding. He might lead him in uh he's gonna lead him in blocks, protecting the rim. He needs to work on his, you know, his rim protection defense. He's a great weak side rebounder, but on, on the ball he's gonna get better as he gets older. Yeah, and the game they just played on Monday against the Celtics, he had 27 points and 18 rebounds. Just seeing anyone with 18 rebounds on their stat sheet is super impressive. And like you mentioned, he still has things he can improve. And obviously, you know, being a second year player, that's not necessarily something to be super worried about. So do you think the team and the management and everything, do you think they're really worried about their current 4-9 record, or are they more focused on getting these players to play well together and grow together so that, you know, in a few years, they can have this really good, really effective team? I, I think they're going to make some trades. I think they're going to trade Ricky Rubio, because Chris Dunn, uh, he, he, you know, he's a defensive, defensive player. He fits... He fits the young mold. Ricky Rubio might be the worst finisher at the rim ever in the NBA. I think that's a stat that someone's thrown out. Like he's thirty percent at the rim. He right. can't shoot. He can't shoot that well. He's. I mean, he's an A plus passer. But uh, you know, I think they need. He is, his values as high as his contracts coming up. I think with Tyus Jones and Chris Dunn, you get two point guards that can that can grow, and hopefully, Chris Dunn turns into your. You know, one of those t top, you know, twenty point guards in the NBA. So you, you got to trade Ricky Rubio. I don't know who you get for him. You, you probably need a shooter. Uh, I, I think like a Kyle Korver, like a, a Redick, a spot up shooter, or would do well on this team just to spread the floor for the for Levine and Wiggins in the post for Towns. That that's what needs to happen for them to win. They don't have any other shooters. Yeah, and as far as the point guard situation there. Obviously, like you said, Ricky Rubio is not a good shooter at all, but, you know, you have 
Tyus Jones, who is a new addition to the team, do you think he's someone who could kind of fill that gap that's left when Ricky Rubio is on the floor? I know, obviously, being such a young player it might be hard to determine that right now. But, you know, do you think they keep Ricky Rubio around much longer if someone like Tyus Jones or Chris Dunn proves that they can be very effective as point guards? I think it's going to be Chris Dunn. I think he's going to step up. He's He shows – he's there at the defensive end. He leaves, already leading the team in steals. He's only started five games. It's it's going to be him. I think they're going to give him the keys to the team because – and Wiggins also. I mean, I mean not Wiggins, but Levine is right. kind of – was going to be their point guard. I, I think he's better off, off the ball, like do, doing less dribbling at the top of the key where he'll, you know, hold it too long. He's, he's definitely yeah. more – like a, a Westbrook type point guard where it's like, Definitely. Let him, yeah. And I feel like with, you know, him being more of a Westbrook type point guard, not every team necessarily needs a point guard like that. And whenever I have caught some of their games and I saw Levine carrying the ball up, it almost seems like he wants to be a little too active to be a point guard. You know, he wants to constantly be moving. And I feel like for him, that might be a lot better for him to do off the ball rather than bringing the ball up and, you know, having to dribble through all of it. So I definitely want to see how that plays out with Chris Dunn. Obviously, with Ricky Rubio still on the team, he's probably going to be their go-to point guard for now. Another thing I want to bring up very quickly is you guys now have Jordan Hill. I did not know this until I opened up the Timberwolves website and went to the roster because Jordan Hill, former Laker, but he's a forward center. And obviously, Carl Anthony Towns is kind of your go to guy at the center already. So, with four options, five options actually, you guys have two forward centers in Jordan Hill, Dang, I think, Dang. Yeah, sorry. And then you have Cole Aldrich and Nikola Pekovic. So you guys have a ton of big men. Do you think that's kind of something they need to work on? Like who is going to be backup to Towns in the future? Or do you think with that combination of those four guys, the team is okay in the backup center situation? I, I think the same way. I mean, I like Pekovic. I think he's great if you're going to have Towns play the four. It was kind of the same thing with with like Millsap and Horford in Atlanta, where one of them probably has to go because they're kind of playing the same position. Right. Uh, and Pekovic is getting paid twelve million a year. He can. He should. They got to trade him and Rubio. I, right. I think the value is really high. I think a lot of teams could use a guy like Pekovic who can get you know who'll probably get you fifteen points and ten rebounds. Yeah, and. At least when he was on the Lakers, Jordan Hill was always super active, especially with getting offensive rebounds and that sort of thing. Have they played him and Towns at the same time? Uh, Jordan Hill or Pekovic? Jordan Pekovic. Hill. Oh, um, he's only played in two games. Okay, so probably and, not then. <laughs> yeah, and Pekovic hasn't played at all. He's injured. Right. So... It's it's one it's right now it's you're kind of, and, and Rubio has only played in eight games too, yeah. so those are those are three those are three starters from uh, well Pekovic and Rubio are two starters from last year and and Jordan Hill's a, I think he's a, he's a, he's a great role player right they they're gonna he's only yeah it says he only played five minutes a game in two games so nothing nothing crazy yeah so that's interesting to me that you know obviously with the big contract that Pekovic has, he's going to be harder to offload, especially if he's injured right now. But, you know, I feel like they want to have a solid backup and a reliable backup for Carl Anthony Towns. Not that because he's going to be injured anytime soon or anything like that. I would never, you know, you never want to see that happen to anyone. But it's like, when he's not in the game, I feel like they don't necessarily have the strength around the rim that they should, even though, you know, they obviously have all of these big guys, but with half of them hardly playing, it almost seems like a waste to take up those roster spots with them. Yeah, I mean, uh, Aldridge is okay. I mean, I, he's he's just, 
one of those, he's like a 10th guy on a team. He doesn't right. do anything great. Um, Jordan Hill is a huge step up for, for that breather. I mean, I don't know how he is as far as injury, injury prone for Jordan Hill. But I, I figure those men's are going to go to Pekovic, and then they're going to see how that works with them on the fl- with them together on the floor at the same time. You're like you're talking about earlier. If it doesn't work out, he's going to, you know he's going to, he's gone. Like the the trading block, the fact that they don't care if they lose this year, they can one more draft pick. They're probably one more year away. Like it's just gather gathering assets. You know, take Pekovic and Rubio and get them out of there, and maybe get a pick. Probably get a decent pick for uh, Pekovic, maybe not Rubio. It's a point guard league, and he's maybe not even top 20 right now. Yeah, and I feel like Ricky Rubio is one of those guys where coming over from playing overseas, he had all of this built-up hype around him, and he was so young. But I feel like either because of injuries or what have you, he just never really lived up to that. So I feel like he's fine as a point guard, but he's, you know, nothing to get super excited about. He controls the floor. He, he, he doesn't make too many mistakes. He's a, he's got really long arms. He's a really good, uh, he gets a lot of steals. Yeah. Good, def- good defender, but he can't, he can't shoot. So on the pick and on the pick and roll, they're usually, and he can't shoot and he can't finish at the rim. So they're just making him, take take these shots and he's you know can't really score that he's never really scored over 14 a game ever right and another recent addition to the team is the head coach tom thibodeau have you been impressed with what he's basically trying to do with this team and how he's handling the situation because i know when he was in chicago a lot of people would say you know he kind of just runs his players into the ground and you know, we saw with Chicago how many injuries they started having, especially Derrick Rose and his injuries. Not that that was necessarily Tom Thibodeau's fault, but do you think he's sort of handling minutes and stuff better here for the Timberwolves? Like he's not overplaying the players every single night they go out for a game? I mean, they're they're playing each of the big three 35 minutes and dang 31 minutes. Uh, that's that's pretty safe. It's not like Jimmy Butler when Jimmy Butler is doing like 40, 41 minutes. Right. And I just, I just like his defensive scheme. He's not, he was obviously like the defensive mastermind behind like that 2008 Celtics team. So I think that he's going to be a great, great help for Towns, great help for Wiggins, for Levine and Dunn. Those guys are going to be, they're going to be a fantastic defensive team in two years. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at their their they're ranked in the middle of the pack. They're like 15th. Yeah, and that's not bad considering they're a team with a losing record. Obviously, they want to get better on the defensive end because you know, some of these games that have been lost by 10 or fewer points, they probably could have won at some point during the game. It's just a matter of getting those few extra defensive stops. And like you said, Thibodeau's known for his defensive schemes and everything. So do you think he is going to be the guy who will make Levine, Towns, and Wiggins into these kind of very well-rounded players? Because obviously the three of them have things going for them on offense. We mentioned they're the only three who have been the leading scorers in all of their games so far. And for the most part this season, that probably won't change. They'll probably continue to be the leading scorers in each of their games. Just based on who else is on this team, it's almost like, okay, who's going to be the leading scorer for any of these games coming up it's not going to be ricky rubio probably not going to be jordan hill if he's only playing five minutes so it's like they really really depend on these three guys for the scoring for the team once they have that sort of defensive mindset too do you feel like that's going to be the next big step to get them to where they want to be as a team Yes, I, I think that he's going to – they can also – they have the body types, they have the length, they have the height to switch to switch everything. And Thibodeau will hopefully, you know, when everyone's healthy, will hopefully have a scheme in there where they can do that, where they can showcase, 
you know, a, a, a one five pick and roll where, where Levine and Towns can just switch. You just switch and, and, or trap and, and not worry about getting that rolling center down the middle. They, they'll have they'll have uh, like a Wiggins could the guy who can step up weak side. It's it's really up to uh, up to up to Thibodeau on what he wants to do and what he can utilize with these guys. It's only been a few months into the season. I think they're in their 15th. They're doing a lot better than Golden State with their holding lineup defensively, at least. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, are you happy with where the team is right now, even though they aren't winning a ton of games? Because I know, obviously, as a Lakers fan, I kind of understand what it's like to have this young team and they aren't quite where you want them to be. But I think, you know, with the Lakers, they've kind of come out and they've surprised a lot of people. A lot of people didn't think they were going to be quite as good as they've shown they just beat Oklahoma City last night barely with a practical buzzer beater by Nick Young which is just a very weird sentence to say in general but overall as a Timberwolves fan are you happy with how they're making their progress yeah I I didn't expect too much too fast especially with you know Rubio and Pekovic being out um I don't really want them to worry about the wins, which is really not the smartest thing to say. I think it's, you know, more worrying about gelling, gelling as a team and finding and finding out what, what the team is good at. Yeah. And I think, you know, the Lakers are in a similar situation because it's Luke Walton's first year as head coach there. So it's like, I don't think too many people, especially management and everything had, these very, very high hopes for this season. Obviously, you know, Kobe left last season and now it's like, okay, now we start to build this team into what we want it to be. And do you think that sort of happened with the Timberwolves once they brought Tom Thibodeau in and they had this core of Towns, Wiggins, and Levine? Yeah, they. Get, I mean, they gave uh, Thibodeau the keys to the castle. They're, you know, he's going to be, you know, even a – probably have a lot of say in the in general management portion too. Uh, they ha- they have their core, you know, the, the right they have the right coach. That's that's probably the most important thing. The right coach, they're probably they're going to give him a chance. They're not going to pull uh the rug from under him after one year if they don't make the playoffs. Um it's probably a a 3 year fix to get them in you know in the top probably top 6 in the west. So they're doing the right stuff. I guess I'll I'll quote the 76ers, trust the process. Yeah, and obviously Chris Dunn is your guys' rookie for this year. What do you think he sort of brings to the table? He's played all 13 games. His points per game is only at 3.7, so it's not huge, but he also probably isn't getting, you know, the kind of playing time that Rubio is when he's in at point guard. So for Chris Dunn, what do you think are the things he should work on his rookie season? Huh. I, I mean, I think his defense is there. I think he, he pushes, he pushes the ball. Well, his free throw percentage is not good. Um, just his, his, his field goal percentage is just not good at, at all. He's shooting 31%, 57% from the free throw line. He was much better in college at, at this. Uh, it, it's just probably the shock of, you know, coming, coming into the NBA and he started, he had to start five games for Rubio. Right. And he, he's, I don't think, I don't think he knows who he is as an NBA player, which happens to a lot of rookies, especially when, you know, he doesn't have any, uh, and there's not too many veterans on the team that are, are leaders. You know, I wouldn't say Ricky Rubio is a leader. Pekovic is a leader. Um, Especially not like Shabazz, is probably the best leaders on the team are going to have to be Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins. Right. And I think with, I don't want to necessarily say lack of veteran presence because you have these guys who have been in the NBA for a while, but it's like Towns and Wiggins seem to be the voice of the team. So I feel like with them being so fresh in the NBA still, you know, Chris Dunn doesn't really have that point guard to look up to if Rubio is, you know, missing almost half of the games already. And 
that might make it tough for him. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for the rest of the season because obviously assists are kind of more of his strong suit right now. He's had 42 for the season so far. So that comes out to about three per game, which it isn't great, but it's not bad either. So I think if he obviously focuses on getting his shot to be better, especially free throws, I mean, as someone who only played basketball in high school and played, you know, kind of like rec ball in college, I never really understood how NBA players could be so bad at free throws. You literally just have to stand there and shoot the ball from the same spot every single time. And, you know, you don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing. So like you said, you know, maybe it's the shock because he was better at these things in college. And he went to, I believe it was Providence, right? Yeah, For he college? went to Providence. I mean, yeah, he went to Providence. He shot like 70% from the free throw line there, which isn't great as a guard. Right. And, you know, with him being a guard, usually it's the bigs and Rajon Rondo who, who can't shoot free throws for whatever reason. And, you know, Providence isn't the biggest basketball school. So, like you said, obviously going f from a school like Providence to the NBA and kind of just being tossed to the wolf, no pun intended, tossed to the wolves in a couple of starts because Rubio's out. I think he probably just needs a little more of an adjustment period. And like you said, he's good on the defensive end. So hopefully he can sort of improve more on the offense uh, offensive end. Not that it's necessarily needed when you have Wiggins, Towns, and Levine throwing up huge numbers every night, but it would be nice for them to have a point guard who can score. And obviously free throws are something that players typically have to work on on their own time because once the season starts, it's like they don't have a whole lot of practices because they're playing almost every other night. Yeah, yeah. He's got it's gonna be something he's gonna have to fix in the off season. He's gonna he never he never was a great free throw shooter, but fifty seven percent is is still, you know, thirteen points off his college average. And he was skating the line pretty that was his thing in college, is getting the line about six times a game, slashing, creating. And if he's gonna do that in the NBA, it's gonna be a real tough it's gonna be a real tough league if he shoot fifty seven percent. Yeah, definitely. And it's sort of crazy to me that Ricky Rubio has only been in the NBA for five years, so this he's going on his sixth season now, and it seems like he's been in the league for so much longer than that, and I feel like he's spent a lot of that time missing games. Do you think there's any way Ricky Rubio kind of gets back to his form from when he first came into the league and sort of had all of this potential? Because he's only 26 years old which is not that old for the NBA. So he still has some years left in his prime, so to speak. Do you think he'll sort of adjust and kind of get back to playing as well as we all thought he was going to when he first came into the league? I, I think he's kind of, unless he pulls a, like a Jason Kidd type shooting turnaround. Right. He's not, he's going to be a top, top three backup point guard. That's it. That's his. That's going to be what he's going to be best at. Going in there for twenty to twenty-five minutes, um, running the second unit, where he where he can play against lesser like lesser defenders, and just get to the basket, get the basket dish, you know, drive and drive and kick offense. Because he he's shooting thirty percent from the field this year. He he's only shooting thirty per six thirty six percent for his career. Right. Um, can't he can't finish at the basket. Uh you can't have a starting point guard at this day and age not be able to shoot a th not be able to shoot a three or or finish you know yeah do you think by the end of the season Ricky Rubio will still be the starting point guard or do you think they might migrate over to Chris Dunn to allow him to sort of get a feel for the NBA and kind of just get better through playing games I don't think they should do that. I don't think he's going to be um, there. If Rubio's on the team, he's always going to start. Right. They just need 
they just need that for, you know, a guy to get the ball to Towns, a guy to get the ball to Wiggins. They shouldn't they, – and Chris Dunn doesn't need any more pressure than he already has after, from all the games he's already started. Uh, unless they trade him. If they trade him, I, I say they uh, – then they're going to say to Dunn, you know, we traded this guy because you're the future and, that you know, give him a huge pep talk. Hopefully get, they'll get in his head that he belongs there, that he's a starting point guard of the future. Take, take probably, you know, take February on to, to push everything. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned Rubio and Pekovic, possible trades. But what I want to ask you now is, do you think any of these players make the all-star team? Uh, Ta- Towns is going to make it. Right. Towns, Towns is going to make it. Um, Wiggins... Maybe uh, you got in the West. It's so tough. Right. Um, as, as a wing. And obviously Zach Levine coming back for the dunk contest. Is he? Did he confirm that? I, I don't know. I'm asking you, do you think he will? He did it twice. So I, I think he might be, I think he might be done. Okay. I, I think he might be done. Um, Got all the dunks out of his system for now. <laughs> He's that dunk on this last year was maybe the best ever just from the, I mean, just from the dunks they did. Right. Yeah. But Wiggins is going to have to go against Aldridge. Cause now, isn't it, isn't it like three, three big, there's going bigs and smalls or whatever, how they're doing it. There's no center in the all-star balloting. Are they still doing that? You know, I, I've never really understood how they've done the all-star balloting because it's just like okay why can't you just put you know you guys need x amount of guards x amount of forwards and like two or three centers yeah they they, well they usually had that but now i think it's just bigs bigs and smalls like they're they're looping in centers with power forwards and small forwards okay but so he's got if they're just doing forwards he i don't think he's gonna make it because leonard's gonna make it draymond green probably Draymond Green, Durant, Anthony Davis, Aldridge, Cousins. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't Kobe. know what they do because it's like, do you put Steph, Clay, Durant, and Draymond in? Like, do you put four people from one team in the All Star game? <laughs> well, then you're gonna have to put three people from the Clippers in too, because you're gonna get you're gonna have to get uh, Chris Paul. You're gonna have to get Blake Griffin the way he's playing this year, and you're gonna have to get the, the defensive player of the year, Demarcus Cousins, in there. I mean, yeah, not DeMarcus, I mean, Demar- uh, Demarcus Jordan. DeAndre? De- DeAndre. <laughs> Jesus. No, no worries. It happens. Too many basketball players to remember. Yeah, and I mean, Kobe's gone, so Damian Lillard will take his spot. Yeah, I think it'll, it might be a, a couple more seasons before Wiggins squeezes in there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough just because the, the fan voting is not gonna help because Minnesota's not, a huge market right yeah I, I definitely think it's going to be fun to watch this team grow especially you know if they trade rubio or pekovic and they end up with even more younger players whether it be through the draft or through trades they just have a fun group of guys to watch right now and i think that's what's going to like you said earlier keep them as a league pass team that people want to watch. And obviously you aren't in Minnesota, so you can watch them through league pass, which I think that's probably a whole nother podcast just on league pass and the complaints I have with it, even though I've never used it because it's pointless for me. (laughs) I love league. I like league pass. I can't watch, I can't watch Lakers games because I live one County away. So they won't give me Lakers games. So then it just feels pointless for me. Oh, there's so many good teams. I, you know, would you get a Clippers game? No, I wouldn't get either. Oh, yes. Yeah. I love having league pass because I'll get the late games, yeah. uh, 1030. And it gives me a reason not to do anything. <laughs> I, I justify, I'm like, you know, if I went to the bar tonight, I'd probably spend 15, 20 bucks. And if I just stay in from doing that, uh, 10 nights this year, I've, I've already paid for league pass. Yeah, and when you consider it, it's a great deal. It just sucks if you're in the blackout zone for your team, which I am, even though I'm in a different county. I'm not in LA County. So it's like, 
it's kind of a lose lose for me because right now our cable provider doesn't have the Lakers channel. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll uh get that figured out somehow. <laughs> but anyway, back to the Timberwolves. What do you think this team will look like by the end of the season? Do you think just Pekovic and Rubio are on the trading block, or do you think they kind of move some of these other pieces around? Like, you know, I've never heard of John Lucas III or Adrian Payne, and I feel like a lot of people probably haven't heard of them. So do you think those guys just stay on as role players, or do you think Timberwolves will make a lot of moves by the trade deadline. They're they're gonna make they're gonna make at least at least one of those two moves I said the Pekovic or Rubio. Okay. Um, especially if Pekovic gets healthy. Anyone else is kind of, is very disposable on that team. Um, I think Adrian Payne's is that Adrian Payne? I think he's been there the longest. Okay. Um, there's there's no one you know Garnett's gone so there's I don't think there's any real uh real player that that has immunity. Right. I mean, Shabazz Muhammad's good. He's good off the bench. He he can provide that scoring, you know, the scoring oomph that they yeah. probably need. And, and Dang, Dang's good too. He's he's just a good rebounder. He give you a, a double, probably average a double double. Hopefully, um, I guess other than those two guys who are going to be really good role players off the bench when they get a real um, when Pekovic comes back, that's probably it. There's no real high trade value for either of those guys. Yeah. Well, are there any final thoughts you have on the Timberwolves? Are you still really looking forward to the rest of the season, even though it's been a little bit of a rough start? I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a, a good season. I th- they're gonna go on. Probably gonna get in a month or two. Go on a pretty good run. I'm gonna say. You know, put put some wins together. Get that get that footing right. I know I'm gonna watch tonight's game against uh, Anthony Towns versus. Uh, Anthony Davis, if Davis is back, he had a little setback yesterday. He was injured, yeah. set out a set, a set out a quarter or two. You know, they'll probably sit him out for with my luck when he's on national TV. Yeah, definitely. Well, I will definitely have to check out some of their games this season too. Obviously, I mostly can only watch stuff that's on, you know, like ABC, TNT, ESPN. So it's kind of like I have to wait for the nationally televised games to watch any basketball lately. So I will look and see their, see when they're on those channels, check out their schedule. But thanks so much, Joe, for coming on. I know you and I could probably talk basketball all day, but we won't do that to the listeners. <laughs> so we will definitely have you back on for some other topics in the future. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. And to our listeners, thank you guys, as always, for listening, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.